Hi, I'm Liz Needham. Let's have a look at question 2a part 3. So we've got some more information here. So I've copied the table from previous and we've got this additional information up the top. So it says four students who snore. So that's telling me given that somebody snores, the probability that they complete their homework is 0 0.32. Then the next bit of information, four students who don't snore. So given that they don't snore, the chance that they complete their homework is 65%. And we want to know, we've got three students that are going to be chosen, and I'll come back to that three in a moment. I want to just focus on here the probability that students don't snore and complete homework. So I want the probability that they don't snore and they complete their homework. So from the table I've actually got information there about how many snore and don't snore. So I can find the probability that someone does not snore and there are 78 students out of the 201 students who do not snore. Now there's a formula that's on your formula sheet that can help us here and it says the conditional probability so in this case, it'll be the conditional probability of not snoring. Sorry, not that way around, the other way around. Probability of homework given not snoring. So homework given not snoring is equal to the probability. And when we're talking about the intersection, it's okay whichever way around they go. So it's that divided by the probability of not snoring. So in this case, I've already got some of this information. I've got this bit of info here of 0.65. So that is this value there. So 0.65 is equal to my intersection. That's the bit I want to find. And that's divided by the chance of not snoring, which in this case is 78 out of 201. So rearranging that to get the probability of doing homework and not snoring, that is going to be 78 out of 201 multiplied by 0 0.65. So I'm just going to jump onto the next slide for a moment, it's more room here. And so that probability is equal to 0 0.252. So now I've got to come back to this idea of three students. And so what I need is I need the probability that student 1 meets the criteria above and the probability that student number 2 meets the criteria above and the probability that student number 3 meets the criteria above. So in probability, and means to multiply. So we are going to take 0 0.252 and multiply that by itself three times. And that is going to give me a probability of 0 0.016. Now you could also have done that as 0 0.252 to the power of 3. Then that would give the same answer. So the question asked, if I just jump back to the question there, it says calculate the probability, which I've done, and then the second part, support your answer with statistical statements and reasoning, including any assumptions made. So one of the things that I've done is on the table itself, we've got counts of students. However, when we've gone about completing homework, we've been given percentages. So I've needed to assume that I'm dealing with sampling without replacement because I don't know enough to be able to calculate this properly. So one of my assumptions is that the students, um, that the number of students is large enough that sampling without replacement is not required. Another assumption, we always have this independence assumption. Okay, so we're always assuming that 
the events are independent. So in this case, it's the events of homework and not smoking. Sorry, not snoring. We assume that they are independent. We can also assume that the probability is going to be the same for all of the, um, the students that I'm extending this data to. So if you're able to calculate one student, so if you are able to calculate the probability here of 0.252, then that would get you the achieved score. If you're able to get to this probability here of 0 0.016, then that would give you the merit score. If you're also able to calculate one assumption, as well as that, that would get you through to the excellence. Thanks very much for watching.